Uh, we're going to further clarify why the Bible would have said, do not put your trust in nobles or the princes of men. Did you place your trust and security in men to rule over you? Um, are you part of a man's government? Well, that's certainly not a God's government. Uh, in fact, many people believe that uh, somehow the U.S. government um, is a, you know, a nation that's founded on the Bible. Um, how far from the truth that is. Uh, these, are, uh, these are not theocracies, so let's get this straight. They're not a government of God. Now, he does allow them to exist until he destroys them, but for the moment now, he's allowing them to exist. It's just tolerance to a time. Uh, we're going to read an article. Uh, many people believe that they're, you know, they paid into social insurance or social security, so they're ob automatically should uh, have to get these benefits. And there's an article that I found. It was written by Michael Tanner, and it's entitled, Is There a Right to Social Security? Simple article, one page, says, You worked hard your whole life and paid thousands of dollars into social security taxes. Now it's time to retire. You're legally entitled to social security benefits, right? Wrong. There is no legal right to social security, and that is one of the considerations that may decide the coming debate over social security reform. Many people believe that social security is an earned right. That is, they think that because they've paid social security taxes, they're entitled to receive social security benefits. The government encourages that belief by referring to social security taxes as contributions, as in the Federal Insurance Contribution Act. However, in the 1960 case of Fleming versus Nestor, the US Supreme Court ruled that workers have no legally binding contractual rights to their social security benefits and that those benefits can be cut or even eliminated at any time. Ephraim Nestor was a Bulgarian immigrant who came to the United States in 1918 and paid social security taxes. And from 1936, the year the system began operating until he retired in 1955. A year after he retired, Nestor was deported for having been a member of the communist party in the 1930s. In 1954, Congress had passed a law saying that any person deported from the United States should lose his social security benefits. Accordingly, Nestor's $55 and 60 cents per month Social Security checks were stopped. Nestor sued, claiming that because he had paid Social Security taxes, he had a right to Social Security benefits. The Supreme Court disagreed, saying, to engraft upon the Social Security system a concept of accrued property rights would deprive it of the flexibility and boldness in adjustment to ever-changing conditions which it demands. The court went on to say, it is apparent that the non-contractual interest of an employee covered by the Social Security Act cannot be soundly analogized to that of the holder of an annuity whose right to benefits is bottomed on his contractual premium payments. The court's decision was not surprising. In an earlier case, Heverling versus Davis, 1937, the court had ruled that Social Security was not a contributory insurance program saying the proceeds of both the employee and the employer taxes are to be paid into the treasury like any other internal revenue generally and are not earmarked in any way. In other words, Social Security is not an insurance program at all. It is simply a payroll tax on one side and a welfare program on the other. Your Social Security benefits are always subject to the whim of 535 politicians in Washington. Congress has cut Social Security benefits in the past and is likely to do so in the future. In fact, given Social Security's financial crisis, benefit cuts are almost inevitable. Several proposals to cut benefits from increasing the retirement age to means of testing are already being debated. In contrast, under a privatized Social Security system, workers would have full property rights in their retirement accounts. They would own the money in them the same way people own their IRAs or 401k plans. Congress would have no right to touch that money. But since that's not the case, and that's not what's going on, it appears that uh, people that put their trust into a system like that have actually not done their due diligence to realize that they have no rights.